All right. If you're a dermatology marketer and you're looking to up your game when it comes to both video and digital, well, I'm going to unpack a variety of different tactics and strategies when it comes to leveraging the power of data, but then also video. And I'm just coming off a major dermatology conference and I've had a lot of conversation with dermatology marketers and how they're leveraging both digital and video. Wanted to unpack some things when it comes to challenges before we get into a lot of the strategies and tactics in this video. And a lot of these you're probably familiar with, or you've come across it, or you're you know currently in that challenge right now. And one of the things that uh, I uncovered during this major dermatology conference, and this has been going on long before the pandemic, but it's specifically around sellers, right? Sellers continue to be challenged to get in there and talk with those dermatologists about your their solutions. Just getting those face to face meetings continues to be you know, more challenging than ever. So a lot of these digital and video strategies that I'm going to mention and walk through will help leverage uh, to get those meetings booked, to get, you know, in front of those dermatologists a little bit more frequently. Conference rates, as I was mentioning, I just came back from a major dermatology conference and we're not saying don't go to conferences, right? Continue to go to conferences, but I'm going to walk through ways that you can hopefully squeeze out uh, some additional ROI or just amplify the things that you're doing already. And these conversations that I just had at this major dermatology conference focused on also social media and webinars, right? Social media continues to be kind of challenging as well. It's kind of a mixed bag of results. Uh, clients are leveraging it um, for you know the best outreach as possible, but they're getting kind of limited results. Or for like webinars, they're continuing to crank those out you know every single month, but engagements kind of like hit or miss. So again, I'm going to unpack a variety of different ways that you can help um, create a lot of digital assets when it comes to video, but then just also digital marketing to help amplify um, you know your solution in the marketplace specifically for social media or for webinars, right? And the first thing we're going to get into is I'm going to walk you through how to engage and educate those derms digitally. And you're probably familiar with national provider identifiers, otherwise known as MPI numbers. I'm going to get into some of the digital background and how we're leveraging this data. And also if you're using billing codes or CPT codes, I heard that a lot um, at conferences throughout the last 12 months, obviously using billing codes and CPT codes. So we can leverage that information to reach those dermatologists, dermatologists online and then generate a report that actually shows you which dermatologist is the most interested in your solution or product, right? So how would that change, right? Your go-to market strategy if you had a list and I'm going to get into that. Uh, also going to showcase strategies and how you can amplify um, video, but then also digital tactics to amplify the things that you're doing at any major conferences that you're planning over the next 12 months and share tactics to increase obviously booth traffic, right? So you're paying a lot of money for these conferences and you're doing everything that you can for social media outreach and the sales team. But what are some other ways that we can help amplify that? Definitely going to get into that and then share specific ways and how you can actually use these major conferences you're planning out for the next 12 months to capture a lot of strategic video footage. So excited to share these three overall tactics. And again, these are ways that we've been leveraging for the last several years. Um, not only dermatologists, we're actually um, reaching a, a, a variety of niche HCPs to increase awareness and education for a variety of other HCPs, oncologists, medical oncologists, pathologists. Obviously, we're talking about dermatologists today, but we also target urologists and a lot of other niche HCPs using these similar tactics. So if you're trying to influence other dermatologist or just other um, HCPs. Well, we've got um, data that we can show you on that too, but this one's obviously focused on dermatologists. So we're going to get into specifically how we can leverage and actually how it works. I mean, this is a, we're kind of demystifying, right? These MPI numbers and a lot of clients are leveraging these um, numbers for just traditional outreach, sales outreach, marketing outreach, but uh, we help bridge the gap to use this data. You can download this. Uh, it's a free data database, but clients come to us because they're not for sure how they can leverage it to obviously reach um, specifically dermatologists online digitally. And as I was mentioning, we can use CPT codes, ICD-10 codes, really any billing code. So essentially this is how it works. So this is the secret sauce. This is the magic. So let's say you're a dermatologist. 
Um, you go online just like most humans, right? Go online to search for things like lifestyle sites. So think of it as like normal media consumption um, for these dermatologists. So news, sports, weather, finance, travel, fashion, right? Any of those natural um, lifestyle sites. So it's not like uh, publications when it comes to medical. It's really off when they're navigating just like socially looking for things, right? So again, think of it as news, sports, weather, travel, finance. And the great thing about this too is when they actually go online, one of the a data providers that we work with is a healthcare recruitment company. So they have all the data that we can leverage and specifically they have the personal email addresses. I know this sounds creepy, but uh, we're marketers, right? So we're all kind of creepers and we're leveraging this data to be a hundred percent precise. So it's a lot different than social media marketing, right? Where it's kind of like you choose an audience, maybe it's a similar audience and hopefully you're kind of crossing your fingers and toes that you can reach your niche dermatologist online. Well, we can do this with 100% precision based on those MPI numbers. So again, as they come online, um, we're gonna target them with an ad. It's gonna showcase your solution. We wanna make sure it's like high level because a lot of times in this case is maybe these dermatologists haven't seen your solution, don't know how it works, don't know what your product is about. So it's top of the funnel, right? It's creating that awareness. The great thing about this awareness tactic is we can go cross device. So it may start on the tablet, may start on the desktop, uh, may start on someone's smartphone, right? But the technology is smart enough to know um, that we can reach them across a variety of different devices, right? So like myself and probably you, uh, you probably toggle between four to five different uh, devices, right? So that's the beauty about digital targeting. Uh, it's very precise, as I was mentioning with the MPI numbers and it's cross device. And then every single month we're meeting with our clients to see, hey, how can we optimize this? Uh, obviously, we're looking at the audience to make sure we've got the right audience. We're looking at where we're driving that traffic to, right? Let's look at the landing page or website. How can we optimize that? How can we make it more conversion friendly? We're looking at the creative, right? So the other great thing about this is usually when we're launching a digital campaign like this, based on these MPI numbers is we're going to look at the creative and hopefully recommend like an AB test, right? Again, that's the beauty of digital. We can run a couple different um, creatives, see what's driving the best results, what's driving the most traffic, what's driving the most engagement. And we can optimize based on that creative. And there's a lot of other factors. The other great thing about reaching dermatologists online is we've got subspecialties. So I know this uh, font's kind of small. I'm happy to share the numbers, but as of right now, based on this information, and again, we've got a variety of different data partners. So it does change on not a frequent basis, but it definitely gets um, gets updated every once in a while. So we've got the freshest data. Usually it's about every 30 days we're refreshing this data. But as of today, we've got over just a little bit over 16,000 dermatologists. And so what we're doing a lot of times with our clients is really uh, strategically working with them to understand their solution, their marketplace, talking about the creative, but then also targeting um, di di um, different geographic locations in the United States in North America. So for example, let's say you've got a high concentration of sales reps in the Southwest, just spitballing here, but let's just say that's happening, right? So we can focus on zip codes or DMAs in the Southwest to have these ads shown. The, the flip side would be saying, hey, you're trying to grow in the Southwest, right? You don't have um, much market penetration. So let's use digital, right? To create that frequency, create that awareness, create that top of the funnel using this digital tactic. And we can geo kind of target based on zip code. So just a couple different variety of ways we can do that. Um, obviously we strategize, we work with our clients to understand how can we set these campaigns up for success? And what are some of the KPIs that they're looking for? And one of the major KPIs, this is a great segue into um, the reporting, right? So as I mentioned, we're setting up an A-B test, we're launching these campaigns, we're optimizing to success. The other great thing about using data up front, like the MPI numbers, the CPT codes, the ICD-10 codes, well, we can give you a report every single month that showcases which physician by name, by title, by location, um, saw your ad and then obviously even clicked on your ad. So this is a great way to create that lead gen report that the marketing team can share with the sales team. And now all of a sudden the marketing team's the champions, right? And so you're providing this lead gen report every single month that again shows exactly which physician. So, and I know this report's really small, 
Um, if you're interested in looking at the counts, as I mentioned before, uh, we break it down by subspecialty. So if you're looking for very a very niche dermatologist, we can look at it from that perspective to see if we have uh, a subselection or subspecialties inside of dermatology. So I'm happy to share that list with you. And the other thing, happy to share this ad report with you too, or at least an example of it, because again, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road as far as lead gen. So they don't need to fill out a form. They just, we just need, we just need the information of, did they see the ad or did they click on it? And then we can slice and dice that data. But clients love this report because again, they're, they're sharing it with the sales team. And then the, sh the sales team is actually going in there, slicing and dicing that data. They're uploading it to HubSpot or Salesforce and then assigning, right? Certain reps in that territory to follow up because this is kind of like, uh, again, that Legion report. So they saw your ad, they either clicked on it. And again, we've got that information of um, if there is a hospital affiliation, we've got that information. And again, we've got physical location, address, first name, last name. So a lot of actionable data comes out of this reporting that again, the marketing team's typically sharing with the sales team every single month. So that's the first tactic as far as MPI numbers. Um, I also have a great case study and sorry for the balloons uh, recording this through and uh, that's pretty funny, but uh, it's just one of the AI tools that we use uh, here. Uh, and so essentially that is the number one tactic, leveraging those data numbers, leveraging the MPI numbers. So it's definitely a great way to be 100% precise. And I'm happy to share what I was trying to get to before the balloons came up there is I'm happy to share you share with you a case study. We've got several case studies here. So if there's some interest, let me know. I'm happy to send that out to you. Uh, the second type of targeting is really leveraging conferences, right? 98% of our clients uh, go to multiple conferences throughout the year. We're collaborating with them, strategically working with them to see how we can amplify the things that they're already doing, or at least squeeze out some more ROI. So another digital creepy tactic, uh, you may be familiar with this one too, it's called geofencing. It's also called event fencing. Um, what we do is we put a virtual fence, as you can see on the map to the right here. It's a blue virtual fence in this uh, screenshot here. But essentially, let's say you're going to like major conferences like ASDS, AAD, any of those conferences, we would put a virtual fence based on longitude and latitude. So AAD, for example, is typically like in San Diego. So that convention center in San Diego, we put that virtual fence. And then as all the attendees walk through, right, this is where the creepiness starts. Uh, we can serve an ad to them on their mobile device. So the way that works is it's a location-based app. And so we know that um, their location-based services are open. It's accurate within 10 feet, right? So most of us, if not all of us, have our location-based app service turned on, right? Because we want to check the weather. We want to check for uh, an Uber, right? We want to check for Lyft. So we typically have those location-based services open so we can get all that great information. We're leveraging that. Um, and it's based on mobile ID numbers. So it's anonymous data. Um, it's completely different than the targeting that I talked about in the first example with MPI numbers, right? We've got that data up front. We know first name, last name, physician. We know all that information. And so we can provide that ad report. The ad report's much different when it comes to the geofencing tactic because, again, this is anonymous. It's basically like a mobile ID number, right? Each one of the phones has a mobile ID number. And so we're collecting that. We're serving an ad during the conference. That's how the um, targeting works. And then the display advertising, again, it's very very similar to the one-to-one -one targeting where it's on uh, lifestyle sites, right? So think of it as news, sports, weather, finance, travel, very similar to the one-to-one -one targeting, but this is based on the um, geofencing tactic, right? The event uh, fencing tactic. And again, it's accurate within 10 feet. There is a certain uh, percentage of waste. It's not as precise as the one-to-one -one targeting because again, we could be, it could be myself, it could be uh, exhibitors, obviously getting ads, uh, could be the, you know, the, the, the staff that's working at the conference. So there's definitely a certain percentage of waste. So if you want to be a hundred percent precise and you want to know for certain that you're targeting the right dermatology off, um, audience, I would recommend definitely leveraging the one-to-one, -one. but if you're looking to drive and amplify the things that you're doing at any of these major conferences like ASDS or AAD, geofencing is a great tactic because again, it's a great way to stand out digitally. It's much more cost-effective than sponsoring uh, the Wi-Fi, the lanyards, 
the water stations, right? Uh, doing any display targeting in the hotels or at the conference, right? So this is definitely much more um, cost effective than doing any of those other types of sponsorships. And if you are having a product launch, you've got data that you're out there, you've got a major announcement, you've got sponsor presentations. If you're really putting a lot of emphasis, this is a great tactic to layer into some of the other things that you're doing because it's a great way to stand out digitally. You're going to help drive booth traffic because typically the ads have the booth number. If you're doing a giveaway, which some clients are, we could put that giveaway on the banner display ad, right? The, those attendees see digitally. What I love about this targeting too, and I mentioned it's accurate within 10 feet, but the remarketing right after the conference is one of the major things uh, that that's part of this tactic for geofencing, right? So we're going to um, showcase your ad during the conference, whether it's three or four days, and then we're going to collect all those mobile IDs, right? When we were there. And then afterwards for the next 30 days, you can remarket or retarget right post conference. So it's a great way to stand out uh, long after the conference from like a follow up perspective. So obviously, um, if they saw the ad, they'll be in the retargeting pool. And then anybody that we collected that mobile ID will also be in that retargeting pool. So if you know, let's say they missed you at this particular conference that we're geofencing, it's definitely a great way to drive additional website traffic. Um, after the conference for 30 days. And usually 30 days is about the threshold because essentially what we want to be able to do, um, those people start dropping off out of the retargeting pool, right? So we've only got about 30 days where we can remarket to them, but it's a great way to stand out afterwards because typically what's going on, most people, there's meetings, there's breakfasts, there's lunches, there's dinners, and they're stopping in the booth and there's data that they're looking at, presentations. So it's like paralysis analysis during the conference. So if you can stand out afterwards, that's a great tactic to be able to do it. And again, as I was mentioning, with the other MPI targeting, the geofencing is also cross device. So we may start on the mobile phone, which typically happens because again, that's how we're triggering the event fencing and the uh, geofencing through the mobile phone. But then it's smart technology where we can see, again, if you're toggling between three or four different devices, we can see that. Um, and then we can target ads on your laptop mobile device. Obviously it starts with that, as I mentioned, but if you've got, let's say a laptop and you're back at the hotel and you're crunching, you know, you're going through and you're uh, doing some work after the conference. Well, this is definitely a great way to target um, attendees, obviously cross device as well. The other conference tactic, which most people aren't taking advantage of this actually, and it's a great tactic to stand out. Um, it's definitely much more cost effective than I was mentioning, like the Wi Fi, the lanyards, the water station, those sorts of sponsorships. This is called digital out of home. It's also called DOOH. You may not have heard of that term, but you've probably seen it at some ma major conferences or in major cities. So I've got up here. Uh, Chicago, McCormick Place, we're typically having a lot of clients attending and going to conferences at McCormick Place. So this is just a one example. It's great because uh, Chicago is a bigger city, right? So there's definitely lots of digital screens. So that's how this technology works. It's um, basically billboards, LED screens, any type of digital signage. Uh, and high traffic public places. As I was mentioning for McCormick Place, you usually, you know, you've got people walking out of McC McCormick Place, walking to their hotel or walking to dinner, waiting for an Uber, right? Any of those screens, and you can see another example up at the top here, any of those digital signage, uh, we can show an ad to it. And it's a video ad um, that rotates through other advertisers. You can also, we can strategically pick certain digital screens as well. So if there's other locations you want to be more prominent at, we're typically working with clients to see what that radius is uh, and the maximizing budget too from that perspective. But definitely a, un a unique opportunity if you're looking to find something new that you haven't tested. And this is definitely top of the funnel, creating that awareness. But I have seen uh, some creative that we work with clients on to Q uh, include like a QR code, right? So if you wanted to make it somewhat like trackable from that perspective, definitely recommend put some sort of a QR code on there as well. And then let's switch gears. Obviously, we talked a lot about video and being uh, strategic with that from those tactic perspectives, but let's put on our video hats for a moment. I'm going to walk you through some things and you may be doing this already and kudos to you if you are. If you're not, uh, conferences are a great opportunity to capture a lot of key information, especially if you've got some big announcements. 
Um, if you've got great customers that are there that you've got great relationships with, it's always good to get some short sound bites, testimonials from them raving about your product, your solution. The other great thing about this is if you have like subject matter experts or even your leadership team, you know, think about ways that we can do it. And typically, uh, as you can see up here on the screen, we do this in booth. Um, this is at a major oncology conference actually, but we go to about 20 different conferences and trade shows and in booth is usually the easiest way because again, customers there on the trade show floor, you can grab them. Typically, obviously clients are, um, you know, mapping out all their customers ahead of time, but it's just an easy way for them to come over to the booth, spend 15 or 20 minutes with us. Again, capturing a lot of footage when it comes to, uh, testimonials, customers raving about your solution, but, uh, we've also done this and hospitality suites, right? Uh, being on the trade show floor, it's um, it's definitely like a higher energy, edgier vibe uh, when it comes to like customer testimonials. But we've also captured a ton of testimonials offsite at like hospitality suites. Um, definitely different environment. Usually you've got a different backdrop. You're in a nice hospitality suite, more controlled environment, but uh, it just ultimately depends at the end of the day, what sort of style that you want to be portrayed with. There's kind of pros and cons to both of those. So if there's some interest in, in, in looking at any of those examples, I'm happy to share uh, those with you as well. And then the third and final one, which is probably the one of the most important things, right? Because you've pre-planned everything. You've obviously showed up to game day at the conference, but the third and final thing is, hey, what's that post-conference follow-up look like? Right. So we talked about some tactics already. We talked about the HCP one to one targeting. We talked about the geofencing right at those major conferences. So both of those tactics actually have some sort of retargeting, uh, remarketing um, tactic in there. Right. So that digital tactics going to automatically do that. Right. You're going to um, obviously based on the badge scans, based on those conversations, you're going to do probably some sort of drip email sequence afterwards. So it's thinking about it from a um, a conference follow-up strategy. It's not like, hey, you're taking an omni-channel approach, right? You're going to do your email outreach. You're probably going to do sales phone call outreach, right? So these digital tactics is just another layer in your omni-channel marketing approach. That's a great way to think about this. The other thing is if you're obviously capturing uh, strategic video footage at your at these major conferences is you know incorporating those into your drip email sequence, right? As I was mentioning earlier, how do you amplify the things you're already doing? Well, you're going to do emails already. So putting that customer testimonial in that email, right? That's a great way to drive booth traffic. Customer testimonials are probably the number one video asset to grow the adoption of products and solutions and whatever you're trying to market out there. Testimonials, as you all know, is one of the, the, the best types of videos that you can have. The other opportunity is, let's say you had a sponsored event, product theater, industry expert theater, a symposium, let's say, we captured that on video too. Not all of your customers are going to be there to watch that sponsored event, right? So if you can create that on-demand version post-conference and drive the traffic to that, that's a great tactic as well. And all these examples and all these things I've talked about um, definitely have case studies and examples. So if there's any interest, definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to share this to you. And so as you plan out a lot of your tactics and strategies and initiatives and campaigns over the, over the next 12 months and beyond, I hope this information has been valuable. And again, if you need any of the information, you need this deck, I'm happy to share it with you as well. So again, as you plan out the things for the next 12 months, I hope this has been helpful. Bye for now.